Hello and welcome to Competitive Crunch. My name is Bane and I've got some bad news for you if you are a casual Pokemon fan. But good news if you are a competitive Pokemon fan. Because Smogon has banned Kangaskhanite. So Mega Kangaskhan is now in the realm of Ubers. And I think this ban is a lot more easier to understand as opposed to something like Mega Gengar that Smogon banned uh, the last time. Because uh, Mega Gengar, obviously that was banned for the support that was able to provide your team. It was never su supposed to be a sweeper, what a lot of people thought it was supposed to be, but that was never the case. But with Mega Kangaskhan, that thing is obviously an overpowered freak of nature powerhouse that is capable of going through entire teams on its own. And that's why it deserved a ban. And that is what has now happened. And now a little backstory. Uh, back when the um, Mega Kangaskhan was uh, first announced, and it was told that it has this ability which allows it to hit twice, people, at least on the competitive scene, were freaking out that this thing is going to be broken as heck. How, how could this thing be good for the me meta game if it, it strikes twice? But then it was later announced that uh, the second hit only does half the damage. So people were like, okay, that well, it might not be so bad. But when the uh, X and Y games actually came out, we learned that Mega Kangas Khan has access to a new move called Power Up Punch, which is a weak fighting type move that raises your uh, attack by one stage, 40 base power. But in the hands of uh, Mega Kangaskhan, it's a weak fighting type move, but it has inbuilt sword stance on it. So Mega Kangaskhan has basically a uh, move that allows you to get that plus two attack, and uh, it cannot be even taunted by that. It's not, well, I guess that's not really the big, big issue there, but the inbuilt sword stance is a really nice thing. And Mega Kangaskhan didn't have a way to really boost up before the awesome power up punch, but that's now. What we got, uh, plus in the Mega Stage, uh, it has 125 uh, attack, uh, coupled with uh, base 100 uh, speed, which is uh, really solid. And then it has also improved defenses, uh, still 105 HP coupled now with base 100 defenses. And uh, the normal typing actually isn't too bad for it, because uh, it's only weak to uh, fighting, which of course is a common typing that you see everywhere, but you know, the fact that it's only weak to one type is definitely a good thing for it, especially with the good natural bulk that it has. And uh, right here, uh, Smogon brings up the point of the support characteristic. Uh, it's not what they are directly following anymore, but it gives you that reliable framework. And uh, it says that a Pokemon is uber if in common battle situations or conditions, it is capable of sweeping through a significant portion of teams in the meta game with little effort. And if you have been facing uh, Mega Kangaskhan in the competitive scene, you will know that that is true, 100% fact. And, um, Right here, got some uh, calculations here that Smogon has provided us with, and I actually have some more right here and, uh, that I uh, thought would be kind of interesting. Yeah, I will just kind of slowly scroll over right here. You can pause if you want and check them out. Um, Mameka Kanga has gone truly a really dangerous Pokemon, and I think they, they, this was one of the funniest calculations right here. And I know somebody is going to be saying that, but Mega Kangaskhan doesn't do well in Ubers, it shouldn't be banned there. And of course, we never, or Smogon never bans Pokemon to a higher tier because it would do well in there. Pokemon are banned from a tier that they are broken because they are broken over there in that tier, not because they would do well in some, some other different tier. That is never the case. And that's the same thing with Mega Kangaskhan. But if we talk about Mega Kangaskhan, how, how we could potentially do in the Ubers. Um, with a crunch after Stealth Rock, it one hit KOs the standard Great Wall Lugia. How redonkulous is that? Holy crap. <laughs> that is just absolute pure power. Something like uh, Extreme Killer Arceus can't even do that. But Mega Kangaskhan can because it's just so freaking strong. An overpowered powerhouse, in a nutshell. 
But yeah, these are pretty interesting calcs. These are on a completely different page though, but I thought I would include them right here because they are indeed some solid proof of how powerful Mega Kangas Khan truly is. I'm not gonna go through these because so many of them. If you wanna, you know, just pause the video or I will leave a link in the description anyway so you can check them out yourself. Um, but uh, uh, really the best way is when you think about how to actually counter Mega Kangas Khan. It's really difficult because uh, after plus two, it kind of just, you know, destroys everything. And really the, your best options to deal with it are with like Kofagrigus and Sableye. And, you know, they mentioned very healthy Gurgeist. So, yeah. Uh, so we can kind of take Gurgeist out of the picture. It's more of a check because it's uh, really unreliable. But Kofagrigus, well, it does have the... Um, it has immunity to power up punch and return, of course, and uh, you know it can give you mummy, so it can like you can't like double crunch it, so that's the thing. But uh, Sable, I honestly, because uh, the thing with Kofakri is, is that it doesn't have reliable recovery, so if you switch into a uh, uh, double earthquake, you will still get hurt pretty badly, and then you don't have reliable recovery, and Mega can just can just easily switch out, and yeah. The fact that no reliable recovery really sucks for Kofagrigus, but really the best way to deal with uh, Mega Kangaskhan is with uh, Sableye, because it can switch on Power Up Punch on the regular form if, if your opponent decides to go for it, or it can switch on into a Return or Earthquake or Crunch, it doesn't mind too badly, and then it has priority Prankster Will-O-Wisp, and also it has Recover, so it can just uh, go for the Prankster Recover after after that, so Sableye really the best bet that you have against Kangaskhan really from the Pokemon that I've seen. Of course, a lot of people tend to run like Rocky Helm, and this seems to be really the best, like, like or the not the best, but a lot of, maybe the most common way to deal with uh, Mega Kangaskhan. Because what I've been using when I've been using it, and uh, when uh, when I've been uh, basically when I have been using it. I've seen a lot of random like Rocky Helm, and so I'm like, okay, what is this Skarmory really going to do to me? And then I'm like, okay, it has Rocky Helmet. But then your opponent will lose the valuable leftovers recovery. So it's it's just a thing showing how over-centralizing uh, Mega Congress Khan is. People uh, just are running specifically Rocky Helmet to deal with the uh, Mega Congress Khan just, just to get the residual damage on it. But Sableye kind of the best thing to really deal with it, but then again Sableye on its own is not really the best thing for the meta game. It wasn't in Gen 5 and it's kind of looking that it's not gonna be the best thing in this generation either. It didn't really get any kind of buff besides the Will-O-Wisp being more accurate. But, you know, Sableye not the best thing in the meta game. And if you're forced to run something like Sableye specifically just to deal with Mega Kangas Khan, it's a sign of how over-centralizing and overpowered this beast known as Mega Kangas Khan truly is. And then uh, Mega Kangas Khan, nearly impossible to revenge kill. And uh, yeah, that is true. Uh, when you're at plus two, you have the Sucker Punch to kind of bypass the speed problem that uh, Mega Kangas Khan, you know, still has against uh, faster Scarfers and, you know, faster things like Lottie Twins mentioned here, Genies, Focus Sash, Alakazam. Uh, that allows you to bypass the double sucker punch. You don't even have to worry about the sash. And then Genesect with the uh, steel nerf, you can e even deal with that. And, uh, you know, again, the de solid defenses are mentioned here. So your best checks to deal with it are, you know, strong, fast uh, fighting types like Terrakion and uh, Mega Lucario that do resist uh, sucker punch. But the thing is, you know, uh, with these two and pretty much all the all the um, um, fighting types is that they only check Mega Kangas Khan because you know with these two especially they're not switching into a, a parental bond a double or a quake they get destroyed by it so they are indeed only offensive checks and then the third point that uh, Smogon has right here is the uh, fact that Mega Kangas Khan limits uh, team building and that is true because you always kind of have to prepare for it, everybody is pretty much using it, and you know, you don't always want to be running something like Sableye uh, specifically to just deal with it or put Rocky Helmet on your random walls just to uh, get that uh, uh, unreliable uh, residual damage on the uh, Mega Kangaskhan. 
And uh, right here, uh, it is mentioned that severely limits the team building, forcing players to run dedicated obscure Pokemon with the exception of Sableye. But then again, if you're running Sableye, that on its own is kind of obscure in the OU tier, where, where Sableye, you know, isn't really the best thing around. Especially with the new fairy types being super effective on it. Sableye kind of lost one of it, its, uh, its niches, or however you want to say that. But uh, anyway, Sableye is still not again the best thing for the uh, meta game and you always you just gotta deal with it but you don't really even know how because your best bet are few these few obscure things and that's showing again how over centralizing mega kangas khan truly is and this is a fun set i never really got a chance to even try it out because i was just going with the power up punching because it's so op but uh Interesting fact with the seismic toss is that you know it always deals 200 damage, so everything that is below 401 HP gets two hit KO'd by a double seismic toss. That is that is pretty cool, but that's another thing that uh, Mega Kongas Khan can do, and uh, with that, again, just you know, every, <laughs> simply two hit KO everything below that HP amount, which is pretty crazy when you think about it, and uh, still you have the option for the power up punch that got. That just kind of, with its awesome coverage, kind of destroys everything. And if you think about uh, now that uh, the fact that uh, the Pokeball, Pokemon Bank is still not released at this point, it will soon be. And then people have been thinking, look, maybe we should wait because uh, there might be some things in the Pokemon get Bank that uh, can deal with it. But then again, on the Smogon Pokemon Showdown uh, server, um, we already have the Pokemon Bank tier over there. And when the Pokemon Bank gets released and a couple of things that in the current meta game deal all right um with um mega kongaskon are uh ferathon and skarmori but once pokemon bank gets released uh mega kongaskon will ha have access to fire punch so those things no longer deal with it at all as they get destroyed by a fire punch and i think there was there was a calculations right yeah so uh, Mega Kongas Khan actually has a chance to one-hit KO a standard defensive plus nature Skarmori from full health. 37.5% chance to do it. And it's not even mentioned that, you know, what if Skarmori switches into plus two power up punch and then that gets followed up a by a fire punch. Then it's a guaranteed one-hit KO pretty much or maybe like around 80-90. But yeah, again, goes to show how overpowered Mega Kongas Khan is, and there, are, besides that random Sableye, there aren't like any physical walls that could deal with it. Even Glide Score, that is a really, really sturdy wall, you know, it, it doesn't counter Mega Kongas Khan at all, because you get kind of just destroyed by a plus two return. Glide Score has no way of taking that. Or I think, at, uh, like, uh, I don't know. Maybe if you're running like max defense, but usually the wise thing to do with Glide Score is actually to run some speed because Glide Score is re relatively fast and can definitely abuse it uh, on something like a standard defensive toxic protect sub stalling shenanigan Glide Score that you usually see, and that thing is pretty much one hit KO by a plus two return or like two hit KO if you want to be technical about it, parental bond and everything. But yeah, um, I think I just went through all the main pointers. There's no more to this topic either. But yeah, again, it just kind of destroys everything in the meta game, and it will certainly, if you if you're worried about Kangas Khan, how well it does in the Ubers, it will be just fine there. Or even though that point is not even considered, because we are talking about Kangas Khan being broken in the OU, not how well it would potentially do in the Ubers which I think, again, will be just fine. And something, again, to take into account, that quick ban is considered extension of the initial ban list from the get-go. People were on the smoke on thinking that uh, this thing is most certainly OP. Uh, they gave it a chance, but uh, Mega Kong has gone, proved indeed that it, it is over overpowered, and that's why it got banned to the Ubers by Smogon, which, in my opinion, was definitely a smart choice. And personally, I, I, I think Mega Kongaskan is the Pokemon that has swept me the most, because it's just so impossible to deal with it. And I haven't even used Sableye a single time. 
and my physical walls always get destroyed by it so yeah personally i'm not going to be missing mega kangaskhan at all uh if you have thoughts about this uh definitely leave them in the comment section below and if you have something against the ban let me also know although usually if somebody has so far when i've been making these ban videos talking about pokemon that get banned by smogon People are usually angry about them, but so far I haven't seen a single good argument uh, against the bans, because they are usually just that I personally haven't had problems with that Pokemon. And that's like, okay, can you tell more? Something more specific. But they, people never tell me anything. They just say something really vague or something like that. But uh, usually... Smogon, they do provide good reasons for, they, for their bans, and again, they did that, so I will leave a link in the description. You can go and check the topic out yourself. I will also leave some uh, links for the calcs that I have right here on this other random topic. You are free to check them out yourself if you are interested, and uh, I will thank you for watching. And by the way, I'm calling this episode 22. Because I have already re already recorded episode 20 and 21 and the episode 20 was kind of supposed to be a long special episode but I kind of ended up dragging out to two episodes because I am always surprised how long I am actually able to talk to myself. But, that, th but this was kind of like just um, breaking news so I wanted to have it up right now but I still wanted to have that quote unquote 20th episode special thing so that's why the different random order just in case one or two people are actually wondering and uh, actually care about it but anyways mega kangaskhan is now gone and that that move is best for the metagame goodbye